Hello, I'm Britt from Slanted Spines and welcome to my video. I have been preparing to record this video for a long time. I recently did a blog post with this list in it and I wanted to also incorporate that onto my YouTube channel. So this is going to be a list of queer graphic memoir, true nonfiction comics by LGBTQ plus authors. I do want to say a couple things right off the bat. One of them is that these are all of the ones that I've found and that have come onto my radar through my research. That doesn't mean they are the only ones that exist, but they are the only ones that I'm aware of and I have read almost all of them and I'm excited to share them with you. I also do want to say that some of these are stronger than others. I am merely going to present these to you so that you can choose what sounds best to you. Some of them I enjoyed more than others, some of them I think are stronger than others, um, but I just want to share them um, in case they resonate with anyone out there. And then lastly, I will point out that not all of these have to do with being queer and like the queer experience, but they are all graphic memoir authored by somebody who is queer or a part of the LGBTQ plus community. And so that part of their identity is kind of inherent within their experience. Um, and so, yeah, do what you will with all of that information. The first books on this list are Fun Home and Are You My Mother by Alison Bechdel. These are very iconic queer graphic memoir. Um, I would be surprised if you hadn't heard of these, but that's okay. These are both very seminal works by Alison Bechdel. This one was published in 2006 um, and has been very defining, I think, for the genre. Uh, Alison Bechdel wrote for zines, uh, I think it was called like Dykes to Watch Out For or something, and she is the Alison Bechdel of the Bechdel test, if you know what that is. Um, but these are great works. Um, they're very literary. She is a lesbian and in the first one she explores her relationship with her father who she uh, either suspects or discovers was gay or bisexual and the follow-up is exploring her relationship with her mother. So definitely ones to check out if you like this sort of genre. Next I have How to Be Ace by Rebecca Burgess. This one is especially special to me um, because it's the only one I found, well there's another one on here um, that depicts the asexual experience. Um, in this Rebecca describes their uh, time growing up when all their peers suddenly became interested in sex and uh, how they didn't relate to that, and also Rebecca discusses their OCD, and it has like little inserts about asexuality as well, and so I really, really felt seen reading this. I highly recommend this, especially if you're looking for more about this type of representation. Next I have The Times I Knew I Was Gay by Eleanor Cruz. Um, this was previously a zine. Um, it recounts the many times throughout the author's adult life that she came out to her friends, questioning her desires, self-denying herself by forcing herself to date men, and it looks at the signs that she previously overlooked uh, when she was younger. Um, it doesn't really have like a traditional comic structure. There aren't really comic panels per se. They're more like free-floating illustrations and stuff. And I thought that the pacing was a bit odd and the reflective narrative voice wasn't as strong as it could have been, um, but it's a pretty decent and quick read and yep, it's about the author's experience being a lesbian. Next I have I'm a Wild Seed by Sharon Lee De La Cruz. This is a very short young adult graphic memoir. Um, it kind of has like this intersectional aspect of being a woman of color and also being in the queer community. It's kind of discussing how um, she had a Latinx mother and how she was kind of racist and how the author kind of felt like not black enough um, and ultimately learned to love herself. I really love the art style. It was very brief and sort of introductory to these like ideas of 
like racism and homophobia but um it was definitely a good one and i recommend it because it's a quick read the next one i have is messy roots this is a new release the author of this book was born in wuhan china and moved to texas when they were um pretty young and this goes through their life um including up to into the COVID-19 pandemic. I really, really loved this one. I thought that the pacing was a bit odd. It was kind of all over the place, being rushed in some places and jumping back and forth a little bit in others. But I really love the personality of the author, which shines through, and I love the art style. So yeah, highly recommend this one. Next, I have Calling Dr. Laura by Nicole J. Georges. This um, was published in 2013. Um, it narrates the author's adulthood in Portland with dating and being in a band. She's a lesbian, but she kind of struggles to come out to her mother. It features black and white illustrations and also a through line of her trying to figure out more about her dad, who she thought was deceased, but it turns out that her mother was lying to her. So it's kind of her trying to get uh, to the bottom of all of that and it has a really sad ending. Very interesting, but the pacing was very weird. It felt like the narrative wasn't mapped out ahead of time, so it kind of felt like it was random and what it went to next. It was pretty interesting. Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe. You've probably heard about this book because recently all of a sudden people are trying to ban it or like remove it from libraries and bookstores, which I think is completely ridiculous. But regardless, this is about the author coming to terms and understanding air self as someone who uses e, air, m pronouns. Um, this one, I believe the author is asexual as well. Um, and it moves through air childhood and adult years being forced to pay attention to air gender and how society views them. When e didn't really understand why that was so important to other people and like why those expectations and norms were being put upon M. Um, it has references to Alison Bechdel's Fun Home and uh, features colorful illustrations. The narration and self-analysis are really strong. The ending was a little bit abrupt, but I related to it so much, especially the part where E talks about how E checked out a bunch of queer books from the library when E was a teenager. And I was like, that's totally me. So I really, really enjoyed reading this. Um, I highly recommend it too. My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness by Kabi Nagata, uh, or Nagata Kabi, depending on what order uh, you're going by. Um, this is kind of like a series of graphic manga, and it begins with My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness. Number two goes to My Solo Exchange Diary vol Volume 1, My Solo Exchange Diary Volume 2, and then My Alcoholic Escape from Reality. Um, these are very surprisingly introspective. Um, the first one begins with um, the narrator hiring a female escort and sort of her struggles with intimacy throughout the rest of the manga. It kind of chronicles like her depression, her anxiety, how she struggles to move out on her own, connect with her peers, her parents, her family, um, and just like kind of being famous through these graphic mangoes. So I really like this series. I think that the author does a great job in, you know, analyzing herself and growing and like kind of chronicling everything. So I definitely like these. Honor Girl by Maggie Thrash, and there is a follow-up that I have yet to read, which is called Lost Soul Be at Peace. Honor Girl is, I believe, directed at a young adult audience. It is framed around a Christian summer camp that Maggie attended every year during her childhood. Um, during the particular year of Honor Girl, she develops a crush on one of the older female counselors, and she deals with hiding her sexuality from the other girls in the camp. Uh, it has colored illustrations in a pencil-drawn fashion. I thought that this one was lacking in introspection and retrospective self-analysis, and it was kind of longish um, with a relatable story, but there wasn't much payoff. I did enjoy it overall. Next is Kimiko Does Cancer by Kimiko Tobimatsu, illustrated by Keat Geniza. Um, I love the illustrator's work in this. Um, this is about Kimiko at age 25 being diagnosed with cancer. And so mostly it focuses on her experiences during um, cancer and the cancer treatment. 
and explores, explores how the relationship with their girlfriend, friends, family, and their self were affected by treatment, such as induced menopause and the long-term side effects of treatment, and it questions if they can consider themselves a part of the disabled community because of their continuing side effects, even though their cancer is in remission. Um, so it's quite, actually, pretty brief, but I love the narration, amazing illustrations, brilliant, um, talks about their experience being queer, and I just highly, highly recommend this one. Next, I have Spellbound by Biksha Kumar Som, and this is really more of like a day-to-day -day diary style uh, chronicle of her experience after quitting her job as an architect and doing art full-time. And so what this one does is she uses for the diary for the chronicling a alter ego that stands in for herself and through using that alter ego on the page she realizes that she is trans and it deals with that aspect of her identity a little bit but that's not necessarily the focus of this one but i thought it was really interesting um talks about her Bangladesh parents focuses on loneliness food friendships and self-motivation the illustrations are colorful um i think that the font is a bit stylized and it takes a little bit of time to get used to the font because it was a little bit illegible to me at first a little bit hard to read at first but i did get used to it i really think that the reflections and like the self-analysis parts are the strongest because the day-to-day -day bits are a little bit tedious and without much payoff but um i appreciate the usage of the alter ego stand-in i was kind of middle of the road on that one and then the last one that I will mention is They Called Us Enemy by George Takai. And this is um, also for a young adult audience. Um, it recounts George's experience as a child with the Japanese um, internment camps. Basically, it deals with his experience as a child, not really knowing what was going on and what his what he now knows his parents had to go through as being parents throughout this horrible experience. Um, even though they were going through a rough emotional time, they still had to pretend like everything was okay for the kids and to like comfort them. Um, at the end, it does deal a little bit with George discussing his gay sexuality with his father, um, but I really, really, really think this is a very strong graphic memoir. Highly, highly recommend this. If you get the chance to read it, you absolutely should. Um, but yes, that is the last one on this list. Um, like I said, if you know of any others that I missed, please leave them in the comments because I want to read them. I love graphic memoir and I especially love queer graphic memoir. I think it is just a really amazing medium for memoirs and especially for queer memoir. Um, it just really is able to express the experience of being queer and just being a human and recounting your memories um, in a way that you don't necessarily need the language to convey that but you can do that through images and yeah anyway i just love graphic memoir and i appreciate you watching this i hope you got some good recommendations from this and i hope you have a beautiful rest of your day bye see ya